Welcome, uh, BMUG participants, and thank you for spending some time with me. Uh, my talk today is about improving yourself in 2020. Uh, this is my disclaimer slide. Uh, this talk uh, has no VMware logos. This is my community session that VMUG accepted. Uh, but I'll be talking about my own experience and things I've learned from talking to others, particularly at VMUG events and in the V community. I think it's important that we share uh, between us what we have learned and what may help others. And I will be posting this uh, presentation so that you can click on any links that I put in there. Uh, on my blog, which is blogs.ariosanchezmore.com. Uh, it's easier if you just go to my Twitter handle, at Ariel Sanchez Moore, and uh, you, you'll get the link. So a little bit about me. I'm Costa Rican. I live in San Jose, Costa Rica for, I don't know, 30 years. And then I moved to Denver, uh, New York City, Pittsburgh, and now I live in Orlando. I'm a big advocate of the big community, and I love everything that starts with the B. I'm part of the Bramba crew. I've been a V expert for five years. I used to be a VMA leader, or I'm still part of a VMA steering committee. I love participating in the VMware code hackathons, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the things that I really enjoy is helping others uh, present at their VMUGs or uh, helping them uh, get the V expert award. So if, if you think I can help you, more than happy. My actual job is a senior technical account manager at VMware. I've been doing that job for the last three years. So let's have some fun. Uh, if you have a Twitter account, uh, take a picture while you're, while you're enjoying this session and send it to me. Uh, you can use hashtag VMware virtual or hashtag V community and just let me know. And, uh, and I, I expect that we can communicate that way. All right, so here's our agenda. How do we keep improving, right? Especially in a year like this. Uh, tips for successful remote workers. I've been working from home uh, since 2014, so I can tell you a lot about that. But you know, even this year was different. How you can leverage VMUG in the V community. And of course, you're at a VMUG event, so I'll spend the most time there. Uh, Self-evaluating your options and when to make a job transition. And finally, how to improve your soft skills and how to avoid burnout or deal with it when you have it. So how do you keep improving? And this is a shirt that I just love from the moment that uh, Fred uh, from Austria showed it to me. And you know, it really is, this has to be our mantra in life. Uh, failures are not eternal. There are things that we learn from. And we take those learnings and we keep improving and we keep learning. So, you know, the realities of working in IT is that IT can give you a comfortable life. But especially at the beginning, uh, work and life balance can be difficult. You can be working late hours, you, must, you may be doing the graveyard shifts. I know I worked for, I don't know if I, one year or two years, I was working the, the overnight uh, shift and that was difficult. And uh, normally when we think of the IT guy, we're not thinking of a person that does a lot of exercise and you know, maintains a very healthy lifestyle. They, they, we tend to get uh, gain weight as we, advance through our careers if we don't maintain healthy habits. So all of these things are, are important to understand when we're starting our careers and maintaining our careers in IT. And a lot of the people that manage to make a lot of money working in IT, they're really good at navigating technology cycles and, and you know, understanding when there is supply, uh, when there's an oversupply or, a, or a short supply of skills in IT. So, I'll give you some, some, uh, some of my tips of how to actually navigate these IT waters. Uh, you always want to be aware of what's coming. Uh, if you're in IT, very likely your job will change around every five years. And sometimes we take the job not just because of the pay or the benefits, but because we know in that job we're going to get new skills that are going to be very marketable and can get us uh, the next level of where we want to get there. And another thing that happens in general is that if you stay at the same job in the same position, you're not really going to get a lot of money that way. You either have to be getting promoted and moving around in your company or you have to be switching companies. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So we have to accept the challenge that change is part of our life. Uh, we don't need to you know, follow change and, and go in there and say, this thing that just came out is the best thing since sliced bread. 
and we should do it. And there's some wisdom in sometimes waiting and really understanding and, and trying to operationalize a lot of the technologies that come out there. But one thing that we have to do as IT uh, professionals is we really have to enjoy learning what these new solutions bring and being able to explain them to others and see how they fit into our companies. Uh, we're in a great position, obviously, in this day and age uh, with IT, and especially when, when the pandemic hit, uh, IT workers already had their VPN set up. They already knew how to connect to work. They knew how to meet uh, with vendors over Zoom, et cetera. So we've, we've honestly had a, not a bad time uh, transitioning to this new normal. So I want to talk a little bit about how we learn, right? Official classes, even though we can't always go to a classroom, they're still the best class out there. Um, and, you know, you still get a really good uh, teacher or facilitator, and you still get top-notch material. But one of the ways that I learn is I meet up with smarter people than I am, or people that have done it before, and I talk to them, and I ask for some time in the calendar. There's a lot of free resources out there. I mentioned the Brown Bag, which is a podcasting group for um, you know, basically learning material. And there's no shortage of websites that will teach us how to code, that will, you know, even the vendors themselves, we, as VMware, we release a lot of data out there for people to consume, or we give uh, free passes uh, to our learning platform. And another thing that I'm gonna talk about is about how to use social media to keep up to date with a lot of things. One thing that I've found during COVID is that it's not so much, the difficulty is not in finding the source of the material, it's finding the time in the material. So one thing I can recommend is that you set up some time in your calendar for yourself so you have some time to learn and investigate. Now I want to talk about how to be a top performer. A lot of the times, um, depending on the company, they may only be able to promote or you know, um, give raises to some people that are considered the best performers. And I wanna talk about what that means. And one of the most important things there is you're showing value. Uh, what I like to say is you're a builder, you help build things. And if you don't feel that something is going the right direction, then you do constructive criticism, That's still a builder. Uh, but basically, you're telling people why you think something is wrong and how it should be fixed. It's different to, from complaining, right? You're, you're specifically telling them why you feel that we should do this differently. And there is no perfect process. Everything can be improved in the world. So there's always room for improvement. You always have to figure out, is this something that is worth to pursue? But collaboratively, as a team, if you can do that, if you can be a builder and help others build better, you you probably be showing great value there. And one of the things that I've learned is that you can't really take care of everything that work gives you. But you have to focus on the big things, the things that really move the needle, the things that are really important. If you get those right, most of the time, those little things that you may have not been able to do, they can wait a little or you can talk to someone else and say, hey, maybe I'm not the right person for this. Maybe we can give it to someone else. And we'll talk a lot about how to talk with your manager and handle expectations. One thing I've learned in this pandemic is that we have to invest uh, time into working properly with others. Teamwork doesn't happen just, you know, just by itself. You have to invest some personal time uh, getting to know other people, how they work. I mean, everybody's situation changed with the pandemic. So understanding that maybe someone is working right next to their wife or their or the kids and they're you know receiving classes at the same time that you want to have a meeting with them you know maybe figure out what are the best ways and how to couple each other as a one thing that you will never um you will always find as an advantage is, is if you learn something every day you learn a little you read from here or there and once you read or 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 you acquire some knowledge that you think you may be useful, you know, sharing it with others in your team, saving everybody else time, maybe pointing them to the same resources so they can read the same things, but, you know, always looking how to make things better. That's what I would consider that a top performer will do. Take care of whatever they're assigned, but also help the team get better all the time. 
Now, I want to talk about a concept that many of you may already know, but others may not, managing up. Uh, you want to talk to your manager on how to work together. And here's some things that I've found in my career that are you know, consistent across all my managers. They all want integrity. You know, they want me to speak up if there's problems. They don't want to be blindsided by situations that I already knew of. Um, they, are, they want me to honor my commitments. If I told them I was going to do something, uh, you know, I want to deliver what I said, and I want to make sure that it's done right. And it, you know, it, I, might, I, might not, I myself may not be sure it's done correctly, but I can always ask someone else. And that way, when my manager uh, hears that something has been done, you know, that's something he can trust in my work. Obviously, respecting others, and, you know, the golden rule, do unto others what you want others to do to you. Uh, be on time, be respectful of everybody else's time. Um, those are things that will get you far in life. And then another thing that your managers want is you, they know you will make mistakes from time to time, but they want you to admit that you made a mistake and they want you to learn from that mistake. And if you can do that, I'm pretty sure that you'll have a great relationship with your manager. Notice that none of this has to do with IT. It's just being able to work effectively and being able to trust each other. Uh, candor, which is being able to talk you know, directly and to the point with others, is, is super important. One thing that I actually look forward every week is my one-on-one -on -one with my manager. And if you don't have one-on-one -on -one with your managers, ask them. Uh, put it on their calendar. It's only half an hour or so, but it's important for you to actually understand what your manager is trying to do and what you are doing so that your manager knows about it. So one thing you always want to tell them is what you're working on. Uh, if you have any roadblocks or situations that you're not sure you should, how you should handle, you should discuss the situation with them. But then you should also ask what your manager is working on. And you should see if there's something that you can help them with and that way you both learn. So that's a very effective meeting and that's something that your manager will also look forward to that one-on-one. -on -one uh, sometimes people say when I meet with a the manager, they, they think of it as a negative thing. But these are the people that are basically doing your your, your reports and that have a, a large role to play in your promotion. So you want to be able to have this kind of two-way communication with them all the time. Uh, one thing that I really enjoy is get, getting to know each other and being able to talk a little bit more than just work. It makes it a lot more fun. And we're gonna talk about this about in a little uh, more in a little while. So now I'm gonna transition over to tips for successful remote workers. And that is almost like my cat, but it's, that's not her. Uh, so let's, let's agree that we can't escape math. Uh, we need a good internet connection. And when I say that, you have to be careful because most of the residential uh, ISPs, they'll tell you, oh, you know, we guarantee you this download or this upload. But that's really oversubscribed. So you want to understand that you know, if you're working, for example, during the time that everybody's logging on to Netflix, and you know that your internet is gonna be failing or getting slower at the time, you're not gonna reach that advertised speed. So in my case, I've decided, because I've been working from home for a while, that I've, I've switched to business uh, internet plans because they are less oversubscribed. And typically when I have an outage, it's resolved very uh, quickly. Um, you also want to understand that if you are running your laptop on wireless, there's a limit, you know, there's a big difference between being wired and latency, uh, even if it's in your home network, than if you are wireless. So if you're too far away from the router, see if you can move the router close to, you, to, to your office or get a wired connection. Um, you own the infrastructure in your home and suddenly you may have your family relying on that infrastructure. Uh, the last thing you want to get is ransomware when your kids need to take classes online or your significant other is also relying on you for her laptop to, to work. So make sure you're doing everything right, everything you know, patching your computers, making sure that their antivirus are running, um, you know, running firewalls, et cetera, et cetera, understanding everything on your network. Uh, spend some time in your home network is what I'm saying. And have a backup plan. It, it's just that it's something is going to happen. I had a situation where I lost one of my routers. My internet was fine. The router went, went off and I had to get another router immediately. So now I'm running two routers 
Um, and the other thing I'm doing is that I know I have good hotspot plans on my cell phone. So if I need to spend two or three days on my, on my cell phone, I know that I can take, because I have 10 or 20 gigabytes of high speed, of high speed data. So understand your options, understand um, that this new normal is going to stress even your home record. So own it. Now, one of the most important things uh, when we're meeting remotely is a good out experience. So one thing that you want to do is test. You know, talk to ask your wife or, or your parents, somebody else to have a, a remote meeting with you and test different uh, situations. Uh, you may have, I particularly like this uh, Jabra puck that's available for around $100 and it's really versatile next to USB. But lately I've been using the laptop microphone because it's better, it, I just sound better. And, and until you go ahead and test that, you're not gonna find out. Some people do really well with Bluetooth and some people don't. It really depends on your setup. If, can you really expect, another thing you want to consider is, can you really expect that your environment is going to be low noise? Or are you going to have situations where you may have uh, you know, leaf blowers going around or the train is passing around your apartment or you have a situation where you know, there's, there's people working right next to you. So you might need to invest in noise canceling settings. You can't, you know, no, no matter how good your audio system is, you have to enunciate and speak clearly uh, if you know that you're meeting with other people. Uh, don't mumble in your meetings. And I, I'm, I'm a big offender of that. I'm sorry if I mumbled through this presentation so far. And then the skill of 2020 is mute when you're not talking. Uh, there's several ways to accomplish this. And um, there's situations, for example, in Zoom where you can just, when you're gonna talk, you have to press the space bar or you have to swipe on your phone. All of these, you have to master these because there are so many situations where the meeting just gets derailed because someone uh, thought they were a mute and they weren't. All right, now let's talk about a good video experience. Uh, one of the things that is really fun is turning on video, but you have to be prepared for that. Um, first of all, most laptop cameras, and this is a laptop camera right now, they're not really great for, for video. So if, you, if what you're doing, you have to show your hands or you have to you know, present something, you really want to invest in a setup. And some of the people that are doing tech marketing, for example, they want they, they can connect a real camera to the computer. They can set up a green screen behind them. In my case, as you can see, that's, that's just my home lab. But you want to have something that you can present to your colleagues, to vendors, to clients, you know, something that will work for you. There's lots of, I, I wouldn't say this cheap, but it's not expensive equipment. So try it out until you're happy. If you see somebody that has a good uh, video or audio setup, ask them how they achieved that and try doing it yourself. Okay, and honestly, this is probably the most important thing. Be a pleasure to meet with, smile, be kind and respectful, uh, be presentable and be ready for the meeting and actually participate in the meeting, be present. Um, if you feel like the, the objective of the meeting has been met, end the meeting. There's really no need, and most people right now are juggling uh, between home life and what's up for lunch or dinner or <laughs> breakfast, uh, what the kids are doing. So if you can get something squared away quickly, that's much better. You know, we're in the middle of a, a pandemic. We're working in the middle of a pandemic. We're working through different conditions. So give everybody a, a little slack. Uh, if you find that you miss working with a particular person or, or maybe you want to meet with the extended team as you are doing a change, you know, put that on the calendar, block it out so that nobody else can take that time. Send an invitation and say, hey guys, we're going to, or you know, guys and girls, we're going to work on this uh, you know, from three to four and uh, making sure that everybody, that this time is blocked off so nobody tries to take it from you. You know, you, you, can, you can totally tell people and make it a, a, a custom that we are going to have certain rules while we're working, all working from home. Uh, we all need a little break every hour. So maybe you want to schedule not the full hour, but just 50 minutes or 25 minutes instead of 30. 
um, if somebody comes back and says, I can't make the time, uh, it's exactly the time when I have to be with my kids or something, move the meeting around, you know, be accommodating. Um, it's going to take a little, it's going to be a little bit difficult, but we can all be a little bit flexible. Um, and if we can't, then we just have to figure out another way to do it. All right, this is the part that I really enjoy and have presented a lot in the past. How can you leverage VMUG in the V community for your professional development? And this is from the past year's professional development um, event. I'll give you the link for that in a little bit. So I want to talk about what community means. Uh, typically, the group of people that live in the same place or have the, the same particular characteristic in common. But the second definition of community is a feeling of fellowship as a result of shared common attitudes, interests, or goals. Uh, my, my favorite definition is the second one. And there's a lot of IT communities, but I don't think there's another community like the, like the VMware community or V community. Uh, because we're very welcoming. Uh, we're very welcoming to newcomers. We want to help each other. Uh, we understand that sharing knowledge is, is actually a, a good thing. And we are very active on Twitter, blogging, sorry, and in, in general in the VMUGs and, uh, and obviously VMworld, we just, we, just, uh, we just did that big event. So here's my favorite three V community career resources. I think you'll find a lot of really good um, tidbits scattered across these three resources. First is the Geek, Geek Whisperers podcast. Um, it, it already ended some years ago, but I still find it to be amazing. Uh, opening Acts panels, these are events that happen just before VMworld. Uh, they're put on by a group called VM on the ground. And they have a lot of career sessions in there. And finally, I, I was telling you that this is the second year of the VMA Career Day. The first year was also very, very cool and very interesting. And I leave you the, the event there. You can still register. Like if it wasn't a live event, you just get access to it immediately on the, on the online recordings. So I want to talk about the VMware user group. Uh, you probably already know what it is since you're already here. But if you think about this, every other person that is attending, these are your future mentors, you know, subject matter experts, people who have done uh, something that you probably want them to do. So in short, these are, these are future friends and acquaintances in a powerful and global network. So one thing that I always tell people is to get to know and connect with VMA leaders. Uh, in general, it used to be your local VMA leaders, but now it's not true. Uh, all of the events are open to anybody that wants to join them. Uh, there's not such thing as, hey, the Pittsburgh VMA only allows Pittsburgh people. That's not true. You can sign up for the Pittsburgh VMA and attend it from wherever you are. Um, and offer to present when you get to meet these leaders. They're always looking for people, for actual users to present. So, these are the communities that you're interested in. Uh, they, these are the people that you want to get to know. So this is a good way of getting uh, known in those communities. Um, one other thing is to find others that are in the same boat as you. Maybe you're studying for a certification. Maybe you want to get better at particular technology. You'll find them inside the VMA. I want to talk about social media as a career tool. You know, social media in this day and age, in 2020, is not the same thing that it was some years ago with people just like, oh, you're talking about logging into Facebook and playing Farmville or you know, Mafia Wars or whatever it was called. Uh, no, now, especially like LinkedIn and Twitter, I think are the big ones. Uh, if you're into leadership, you can find a lot of book authors or CEOs or people with you know, really high uh, positions sharing their advice on LinkedIn uh, for free. And especially if you're in tech, well, I can, I'll tell you that Twitter is, is really useful uh, for people that are in tech. Uh, you can tell it that you're interesting. Uh, this is a screenshot of mine. I'm, I'm interested in things like Internet of Things and cloud platforms and augmented reality uh, and open source. And it will automatically in the search, you know, offer me tweets that has come out lately from people that are in those fields. And it turns out IT people are very vocal on Twitter and they're very willing to share their thoughts. So you can learn a lot just from reading a little. Uh, if you have not yet started on Twitter, this is my advice. Um, it's really a platform for spreading information very quickly. 
And it's also useful for short discussions. It's not really meant to discuss long things. Uh, typically what people will do is link to a video if they want to get into more of an explanation. But it's really good at spreading information and sharing information quickly. Global directory of people, you'll find a lot of like uh, of the people that are attending, they will highlight their Twitter handle. Maybe they'll just put at Ariel Sanchez more, for example, but you know, everybody assumes this is Twitter and not some other platform. Now, hashtags are powerful. They're really search terms. Some of the ones that I recommend you know, new users to start with are VExpert, VCVX if you want to get into a really technical things, VMware, and especially vCommunity. Uh, if you have any question, you know, the safest one to use is vCommunity. It'll probably get you someone, someone to help you in there. Obviously, there's, that's not the only way to do vCommunity. There's many other ways. The original one was probably the VMware Technology Network Forums. They're still alive and they're still going well. Um, reading and commenting on others' blogs is a, is a very uh, fun way of communicating. I, for, for example, I don't miss anything that William Mann publishes. There's, I mentioned LinkedIn, but there's also you know, Facebook groups. There's LinkedIn groups. Uh, I know a lot of people that basically have WhatsApp and Telegram groups, and that's how they manage it. Um, I had mentioned this week, Whispers, but I, here I mentioned B. Brownback again. Uh, B. Brownback has channels in English and Spanish. So there's a lot of ways to do the community. You can share your code using it. Uh, and, but you know, there's even chat rooms like Slack, uh, like the VMware code Slack is one that everybody, anybody can join. And there's you know, Reddit, for example. There's any way that humans look to communicate, there's probably an expression of the V community. So what benefits do you get from participating in the V community? I mean, you get a lot, a lot of new knowledge. You get to keep up to date just by tapping into these communities. Uh, and suddenly you also know who knows about a particular technology. Maybe I want to know more about SRM. Oh, okay, let me go talk to that person that I know is a really good SME. Uh, and you also get a wide array of career mentors. If you're thinking of changing your job or, or is looking for advice, probably somebody has already been in that situation and they can relate to you. So leveraging social media can bring you new friends, uh, you know, a web of contacts when you need help, and the resume to apply for the expert and other. And I want to talk about those others. That these are called the vendor award programs, and they're some of the best networking opportunities that you're going to find in the community. Uh, the expert, the Bean Bauerguard, um, Cisco, Red Hat, they all of these vendors have their own evangelism programs, which normally get come with some perks such as free licenses and subscriptions. But again, the networking inside these groups is really, really good. So if you're very interested in some kind of technology, try to find if they have some um, evangelism for you. So things I've picked up from, from participating in the big community the last few years is that, you know, in general, I could be doing things better. The way that I thought that was the best way to do, maybe I found out that there was even a, a, another level that I could take to. And uh, there's immense value in sharing what I've learned with others. You know, there's, there's a lot of good that comes from discussing and, you know, in the interest of just finding the better solution. So knowledge hoarding is something that we quickly understand that it's, it's a negative attitude, uh, especially because we learn more when we share. All right. So now let's talk about self-evaluating your options when we're talking about our career. Uh, we want to look ourselves in the mirror. We want to see ourselves from different angles. And I just thought that this picture from Bruce Lee was uh, just uh, the best for this topic. So let's talk about your job and you. Uh, is your current job something that still gives you a lot of joy? Or have you fi started finding that maybe something else is more interesting? Right? That, that could be a, a big giveaway that maybe you should be looking at something else. Now, is the role a problem? Is the title a problem? Is the pay or benefits a problem? Are, are the coworkers starting to get on you? You want to definitely identify exactly what you're happy about or happy with in regards to your job, and what you're maybe not so happy with. And that will help you have better you know, information and better discussions, which will lead to better, um, to better outcomes. Do you see yourself growing in the next five years in this job? Is this job in a growing or at least a stable industry? Now, 
all of those are important, but I think that the most important thing is talking to your manager and, and understanding is my manager relationship really where it needs to be. Uh, do you understand what your manager sees in you? And is your manager working with you to achieve your career goals? When you guys talk about what your career goals, career goals are, um, is your manager there to help you? Are they putting up roadblocks? You know, are, you know, you have to, this is why I say you have to manage your manager and you have to understand what they are concerned with. So you have to talk about your next steps. You know, when those, can those next steps happen? If there's anything that your manager says, hey, listen, I have a, a formal career ladder and this is what it says that you should be able to do for me to promote you. Or maybe it's more subjective and they tell you, listen, I can't promote you yet, but maybe if we move your responsibilities, add to your responsibilities, I can give you, you know, a team leader or we could make you a manager or something else. So there's, you have to have those discussions with your manager, understand what needs to happen before you could get from A to B. Now, what really matters, right? I want to talk about your job is, is a good thing, but in general, is your significant other or your family unhappy because of your work? Maybe the schedule, it might be the, the pace, it may be that they become irritable because of your work and you're not enjoying it and you're taking it out on them, God forbid. Uh, there's, there could be a, a, a whole slew of situations that come from a, not being balanced in your life and your, and your job. Uh, another thing is that you have to consider, are you able to reach reasonable long-term financial goals? And that can change for a person, but in general, if you're not shooting yourself in the foot by making bad decisions, is this job giving you a, the life that you were expecting? Or is it really that you know, this job cannot give you what you're looking for? And this is so common in IT that people don't take vacations or they, they basically always volunteer to do late night work. You know, that's, that's okay, but if you have several people on your team, you should share the load. So we'll talk about this a little bit more when we talk about work and burnout. But this is the, these are the things that really matter. So another thing that you want to consider is what are your options? What are your backup plans? If you were let go, do you have the financial cushion? Or do you have some money saved so you can actually take your time and consider your next steps? Or would you be so pressed that you have to find a job at any job that comes out? So when you look at those other options, are you more excited because of what those other options are looking at? And you know, we have this problem where the grass is always greener on the other side, but try to write that down. Try to write down why you feel you will be happier somewhere else or doing something else and discuss those pros and cons with people you confide in. I always obviously trust my wife, but honestly, after my wife, I go to my friends and the friends that I built over the years, maybe from past jobs, maybe from the current job. And I tell them, you know, I'm thinking of doing this. What do you think? And if you are planning to, you know, maybe I want to look at another job, you have to really plan that out. You have to think, am I really knowledgeable in all the topics? Will I be successful in that job? And one of the most important things, if you're looking at another job, is to reach out to somebody that's doing it and have a talk with them. All right, so we've touched on job transitions. It's time to really get in there and uh, figure out how to make a transition, especially during COVID. So I'm gonna give, in general, you know, I'm gonna start with very general advice. Uh, if you have decided that you have to close a chapter, you should be crystal clear why you're leaving. Um, the reason for this is because if it was just a difference of money or you wanted to change into a role on another team, then this, you should bring this up to your manager and tell him, hey, listen, I want to do this. And if I'm able to do this, I'm, I'm more than happy to stay and continue working. here. There's no other problems. But, you know, if <laughs> it will also give you a good idea if they come back with a counter offer. Um, is that what you're looking for, right? Most people don't like taking counter offers because they feel like they they are a, a last chance. You know, we didn't really fix the problems; we were tossing money at them. So, if it's just money, you should be able to get that money without having to apply somewhere else, get an offer, and then come back. Uh, sometimes that's what it takes. But typically, if if that's the problem and people don't want to work with you, well, that's your answer. So you should also consider that by the time you have made a decision. 
you should be working on how to exit cleanly and maintain good relationships. Um, you know, be considerate. And don't lose that social capital when you leave a company. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So some last checks. Uh, when you're looking at another job, does that job make sense? Like when you look at your life's work, did that change make sense? Was it a, a good new step or were you doing just more of the same? Um, you have to understand also, are you making a change for money, career path, responsibilities? Maybe you're looking for a different pace. Maybe you're looking for a, a job that has more balance. That's very common in IT. So again, don't be afraid of discussing pros and cons. And it, it may even come to be with your own manager. If you have a great relationship with them, they may tell you, yeah, I agree. That's, that's a great move for you. And you also have to be prepared. Maybe you start a new job and it's not exactly like what you thought it was going to be. But then again, nothing is. This is why we embrace change. This is why we make things work. So be careful when you make job changes, especially during COVID. Uh, make sure that they make sense, make sense that, that these are things that, you know, you don't want to be hired in a company and to suddenly find out that, oh, this company is having a very bad time due to COVID and basically they hired me, but you're going to let me go in, in two months. That doesn't make any sense. So make sure that you have investigated what you're doing. So, yeah, so uh, talking again about uh, changes during COVID, this volatility, all these situations, they create opportunity. So they create risk, you know, they create apprehension. But one thing you learn when you're, you're reading about investing is that when people are fearful, that's when you, there's more than more opportunities. So that's when you have opportunity. So again, you want to consider your old and new industries. Are you moving from, you know, from a company that was doing well into something that was doing even better? Um, or are you moving into a, 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 a situation where you feel that things are going to be better for the next five years? One thing that is important is considering the companies. Uh, you have to read between the lines if it's not a public company. Maybe you're hearing that people are being let go, that maybe we're not getting as many orders. You're looking at the IT systems and they're not really doing the, as much of uh, jobs as they used to be doing. Then that's probably a good moment to start polishing up the resume and start thinking about it. But if you feel that the company is actually thriving on their COVID because we solve the specific problems, then that's, that's a good indicator that you should probably stay. When, they're, when we're public companies, it's much easier because you can track the, the stock and you can track the news and you can see if they're still doing good sales or if they're having losses. So, you know, you want to be mindful of all those things when you're considering a change, especially during uh, volatile times. And again, always remember, what is my value? If I, get, if I am let go today, what kind of a job could I be looking for? Uh, do I have some time? You have to be prepared for all those things. All right, this is the last section of this talk. We're going to talk about improving soft skills, which is one of the things that most IT people have problems with. Most of us can learn technical things, and that's not a much of a problem. But being able to communicate with others, work well with others, and being able to deliver presentations either to customers or to management, that's a big deal in getting us promoted and how we can avoid burnout. And uh, there is actually a whole panel discussion uh, from 2018 on combating IT burnout by the opening acts. Uh, I left that, that link in there. So there's a lot of good talks around that. So one of the things that I love doing uh, regarding uh, soft skills is reading. Uh, there's a really good book about uh, how to win friends and influence people. And Honestly, it sounds shadier than it really is. Um, it's, it's a good book. It's a good book to read. It's a Dale Carnegie, which is a, something that Warren Buffett came back and said that was the best thing that he ever did. And I also love other books like um, The Greatest Salesman on Earth and in the World, sorry, by Ogmandino. And that's a really good book. It's not about sales in a, in a, in a dirty way. It's about looking for win-win situations. So these gems of books have helped countless people um, advance their careers, and they can also help you, even if they're meant for salespeople or they're meant for other careers. Soft skills are something that I've heard other people say transfer those skills because they work in a lot of professions. 
Um, one other thing that I like to do is you, you want to look for opportunities in your current job to enhance and practice your soft skills. Um, you know, you want to be a leader, you want to, to coordinate projects. Um, even if you're not assigned a leader, you want to be an active participant and be helpful. And that way you can really understand and create good networks with others inside of your company. But perhaps you are you know, working with vendors, working with, with other teams inside and outside your company. Uh, if you are the one preparing deliverables and presenting, you're definitely practicing your soft skills. And another thing is that you want to let your personality show. Um, don't be afraid to, to say what you think or, or fight or, you know, and I, I quote fight because you don't want to be too forceful either, but, you know, support your ideas with arguments. Uh, as long as you're respectful and proper, honestly, you're, all you're doing is trying to make everything better. And don't forget to smile. Smiles are, are one of our most important um, weapons out there to really gain trust and to be able to work with others, especially when we're only working with others through video cams. Uh, but even the smiles can be heard in our tones of voice when we're talking with others. Um, one, another thing that I want to focus here is that we spend a lot of time in work, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week at least. And you know, we're going, maybe you spend between two and five years at each job. Um, that's a lot of time that you spend with other people uh, where you should be able to make a good relationship, get to know others. Maybe you, know, maybe you can't be best friends with everybody, but you can definitely make some good connections with others. And that way your workday is a lot more fun as you get to, you know, one thing that I enjoy a lot is, is working, is talking with others, my, with my coworkers around football. And I'm a big New England Patriots fan. So anytime that the football season is on, that's when I, I have a lot of fun. Uh, you know, being authentic and, and feeling accepted for who you are, it's, it's, it's one of the things that will give you a lot of satisfaction across your career. And that's a skill. You, you may say, oh, well, you know, my job is, is different. Sure, but if you come in and you try to change things and you try to make it for, better for everybody, people will ultimately like you. Uh, they may not particularly love you, right? But, but they were going to think that you are okay. So you can work on it and you can definitely make things better for everybody. So let's talk about how to try to avoid burnout in the first place. One of the things that I didn't think was important, but now I'm almost 40 years old, now I think is you know, having a routine and trying to sleep your six to eight hours a day. Um, it turns out it's really important. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that will help you, um, that will help you keep you healthy. Another thing that I wasn't very good at was, for example, taking vitamin D and understanding that because I work mostly indoors, um, I was vitamin D deficient. So, you know, don't, don't forget to go to your doctor, get your blood exams, uh, go to the dentist, get your teeth taken care of, get some exercise, you know, go for a walk three times a week. That's normally what's needed uh, for an hour maybe. And eat healthy. Uh, one of the best things, best advices that I heard is, Try not to make the dinner uh, your biggest meal of the day because that will make, you know, that, that's just big, going into storage. Whereas if you have the bigger meals in the day and, and the breakfast or lunch, you'll actually use them up. So spend some time doing things you like as well and, and you know, enjoying your family. That's part of really what makes us happy. You know, we need to strike a balance. And another thing, and I've talked about this before, is make sure you have friends or people that you trust, people that you can speak candidly with, uh, whether it's your family, your closer group of friends, your coworkers, your boss. If you have that web of trust established, then when you actually, you know, when you're starting to feel a little bit bad, when you start to feel down, then you can actually share your words. You can tell them, listen, I'm not that happy about how things are working out because of this and that, and, and you will feel and people are understanding you because they know you better. So if you establish those, uh, those relationships first, it's much easier to, be, to, take, to, to fix burnout when it happens. Um, I would say that one of the things that I always, and thank God my parents are still alive, but if I really don't know what to do, I call my parents and I tell them what I'm thinking. 
and they know me ever since I was a little kid. So, so they know a lot of how I am. And they'll give you me insights that no friend would ever be able to give me. So don't forget that you have your extended family, your friends, your coworkers, your manager out there to help you. Um, and listen, if, if you don't have all these things, and maybe I can help, I want to offer that. If, if you haven't used the V community for technical resources, I'm telling you now that VMUG and the friends that I made at VMUG, I've, I really feel that if we can help you, will help you and particularly I'm offering myself if I can help you reach out to me on Twitter I'll do everything I can. So this is my last slide as you probably have detected by now the essence of this talk is communication and communication takes many levels and many forms but if you can come and communicate properly communicate candidly and do it with with uh, care and trying to find situations that are good for everyone you will definitely succeed in navigating 2020. I would love to hear your feedback. Again, my Twitter at Ariel Sanchez Moore, uh, blogs.ariosanchezmore.com is where I will have this talk. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.